<clears throat> hey, this is Andrew. And this is Brent from Crown the Empire, and you're watching Ear Candy TV. <laughs> Hey guys, we have a special treat for you today. We're here with Crown the Empire. Hello. How's it going? Fantastic. We're here in Pittsburgh today. Taddy's hometown. All his family's out. We got a lot of people here today. It's gonna be a good time. Super stoked. Nice. Yeah. So, how is this tour? How's everything going? Great so far. Um, retrograde tour. You know, first time touring off of our new album. A uh, lot of new songs, and we. Uh, this is, we got like the most prepared I think we've ever been for a tour before this. I felt like we were like kind of in the motions before, but now we've practiced every song. We could just change out the set if something didn't feel right, we can just immediately switch it out now. It's not like a preset anything. So it's been cool feeling out what the fans like and what they don't and trying to make the, the perfect set for the tour. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Mm, so how is everything going with the new album? Um, we're, I mean, we're constantly always writing, uh, retrograde tour cycle, we've been trying to just find different ways, like Andrew said, to convey those songs live and kind of get the fans feedback to see what direction we want to take in the future. We've definitely taken more of an alternative rock influence on this album than we have in the past. Um, the post hardcore elements aren't as prevalent. So, um, just to move on forward, I feel like that way, the, uh, the alternative rock and, um, uh, that kind of um, kind of theatrical rock that we've done in the past more than just the post hardcore influence yeah and future stuff yeah. yeah we're like honing in a sound for sure we've been taking chops and trying to establish like an identity as a band you know figure out who we really are and what kind of music we want to make forever but yeah it's always good to change and to to be receptive to everybody and see what they think but so far so good yeah definitely so what is kind of the writing process like for you guys when you write is there a, a particular person that does one thing or do you all kind of work together um we'll go into the studio with a producer and we'll just kind of lock ourselves away we'll get like the bare bones of the song and then get everything out to everybody and everybody you know Taddy will add and, he, and he's like i don't like the way this kind of vibes like this i think i would play it like this more and we kind of all work together like that but normally there's a there's a skeleton of the song you know with like the chorus you know the general I idea of a melody and um, guitar riffs and stuff like that first uh, yes yeah, like a it's like a library of influences like i guess it started when you're when you're young you when you write your first song it's like i want a song to sound like one of my other favorite songs now we have uh, 14 different influences where i want it to have the incubus chord structure but i want the, the song structure to sound more like afi and i want this cage the elephant type vocal melody over top of it so just like the more complex <clears throat> and the more influences we bring into the process now as we get older i feel like creates music that hasn't been before in that way. More ingredients make a more complex kind of result. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And you guys mentioned Incubus. Is there any other really big influential bands that you guys look up to or that you listen to for inspiration? Uh, tons. We'll go, we'll go as far back as like weird... Uh, like for example, uh, what's the song? The, the Big Drake song with the... One dance? Hotline Bling, Hotline Bling, Hotline Bling. Uh, the sample from that song, the elevator kind of music thing, is from this old, old song from the 50s. And it's just like a small sample that they took and you would never really hear that and apply it to that modern era. So like taking weird, weird influences from like uh, Bjork or something, you, you wouldn't be able to identify it at all in a, in a realm like hard rock. So to take all kinds of weird stuff like that. There's no limit, but you know, anything, tons of stuff. I feel like with the retro influence on the album, we were influencing like The Who and Bowie and Led Zeppelin and Jimi Hendrix in ways we've, and that kind of 60s movement of what culturally was going on with, um, with people our age. Mm -hmm. I feel like that was really important there. So we would look back and be like, this is what The Who talked about. This is what Hendrix talked about. This is like, like I want to look like Keith Moon on stage, just kind of things like that we've never brought up before on previous records. It was like, what's current and what's hip and what's hype? We said, forget all that. What's cool and retro? Why, why is this retro appealing in fashion and music now? Mm -hmm. Nice, because you guys definitely have a very unique sound, and I think it definitely shows that you guys 
are definitely active listeners and mm. pull from a whole bunch of different directions. So. Like, Neat. Yeah. 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 So, a couple more fun questions for you. Mm-hmm. What sure. are some tour snacks that we can find on the bus? There's a full drawer of hot sauces. <laughs> for some reason. A particular brand. Tabasco. Tabasco. We got for some reason, it's all different kinds of Tabasco. A friend of mine from Dallas is a food rep. So he goes around and he represents like Otis Smoke My Cookies, Tabasco, Pop-Tarts. So he brings a full Land Rover full of the breakfast food items, just little snack items on. So there's, there's like special edition Pop-Tarts, bunch of Tabasco sauces, bunch of cereals. Oh my God, there's almond a milk. quarter pound bag of Cheez-Its. The biggest bag of Cheez-Its. Not, not anymore. We crushed okay. them. Uh, we got, yeah, we crushed them. The driver, there were two bags. The driver hit them and I saw it happen. And I, oh. and I said, hey, where's the hidden bag of Cheez-Its? <laughs> and he Are was, real? swear to God, and he was like, I'll get it. Can and he, he do that? Like he did. He was bored with busters. Wow. Busting him. Okay. Gosh. Okay. Well, <laughs> has there been any? Okay, so we we find some missing food here and there. Mm-hmm. Any pranks or anything fun that has happened recently? Oh yeah. One thing that I started doing was we have our inner monitors, like the, our packs, and there's like a bunch of like s- the cutouts for them to go. And the other day, I put mine in, you know, after we ch- sound checked, I put my headphones away. And Teddy was like, dude, what are you doing? And I was like, what, what? He's like, that's my spot. And I was like, since when have we had spots for these packs ever? And he was like, dude, it's always been bottom left. You know that. And I was like, dude, literally never. And he was like, yeah, mine's top left. I was like, what? Are you guys kidding me? And so now, before the set, if nobody's looking, I'll look around and just like rearrange them all and then run back up and then well, <laughs> preset. Yeah, it sound checked the other day. I had Brandon's pack on. <laughs> Just just you know, yeah, you know, know. and he looked at me and he was just holding mine. He's like, "What are you doing?" And I was like, "I just grabbed bottom left," and he's like over there laughing. I'm cracking up. It's oh, I like God. I like the fact that I can that even down to my in ear like wireless pack, it's like that meticulous. Like that's how meticulous our band <laughs> runs. Like even down to that, I don't even need to look. I know it's mine. I know it's yeah. gonna be in the right place. That's so you threw me off. I sure. got you. Another one is I get I get pictures from our drum tech okay. Travis. Where he's just in my bunk, <laughs> just like with all my stuff, and like we'll just take a selfie with like I don't know my jacket on or something. It's just he won't stop doing it, and it'll just happen at random times throughout the day. I just hijack your stuff. Yeah, just yeah. take my stuff. Yeah, I'll be wearing like my new hoodie or something. Oh, you didn't even see that. I have one. A, a we got the picture. We got the picture. Yeah. Okay. Me, yeah, yeah, I didn't even send this to you. I'm gonna be so mad. Oh my god. This is incredible. Yeah. I have like. Wait, wait, wait. I hope I didn't delete it. Uh, is it there? I'm just seeing a lot of nudes. Well, so I'm seeing more nudes than anything. Here's the big bag of cheese. Okay, this is a very big bag of cheese. <laughs> yeah, but those are the yeah, two pranks we, for sure. We, Travis and I got in your bunk and took a picture. Uh, it happens all the time, so that's one. Love it. Still happens, won't stop. Love it. All right, you guys ready for a game? Quick game? Yeah. yeah. Most likely to miss bus call. Mm. <laughs> I did first. Ready? One, two, three, go. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, he's a dirty dog. Um, <laughs> and, well, I got a call from Br- Brandon. Got lost in Tokyo without his cell phone. Like, and Tokyo is like. Yes, Brandon gets lost in Tokyo without his cell phone. My cell phone's dead. In Tokyo, it's like all these little interwinding streets and alleys, and nothing's in English. I couldn't even have got two blocks, and he just, he, and I was like, how'd you get back? He's like, oh, I just, I found my way back to the hotel. And I was like, how'd you remember the name? He's like, I don't know. It's so and he was drunk, too. The worst night of his life. Oh, no. Yeah. So we got to keep an eye out. Yeah. Yeah, he's the one, always. Okay. Yeah, All right, two more. We only have time for two more. So, who is the most likely to rescue a stray cat? A tree? No, I said tree. Oh! Me? Yeah. And I love kitty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think tree would, would generally be heartbroken. Mm. Just, especially if it was like wounded. Right, right. I would only pick the cat if it was friendly and let me cuddle it. Oh, right. If it was a mean right. cat, I would be like, if I you don't want me, I don't want you either. I, deal. I went back and I looked at who gets more stoked on kittens. I, was, yeah, I, I, I love okay. it. I like the different perspective because, yes, I do. I am 
I am the kids. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay, very last one. So, who is most likely to forget their part during the set? Whether it's vocally or instrumentally. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was gonna write me too. I was no. like, that's why I was like, oh, oh man, I love it. Me, me for sure. I've I mess up all the time. I think we're the most noticeable if we screw up though. Because like, you know, just into a beat and then there's just no beat there. Like, yeah. wait. Everybody everybody looks at each other like, oh yeah, and if I just sing the wrong words, I'll be like, that's not, that's right. not it. That's not, right. that's not right. Oh man. Oh yeah. Or I'll like fall or something. That's always me. They can just bend it and make it. Yeah. Nope. Nope. I'm wrong. I'm wrong as hell. All right, guys. Well, hey, thank you so much. Make sure you go out and get retrograde. And hey, we'll catch up with you next time. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks for having us.